I'm David Harvey and welcome to Harvey's of Whitney. We're an old established family business going back some 70 years and in this masterclass video you'll see some of the beautiful pieces which I deal in and I will try to put them into their historical context. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get notifications of future masterclass videos. Click the link below to subscribe to our free newsletter packed full of details of fresh acquisitions and news from the antiques trade. We're still well and truly in the Regency period with this chair. It's almost the size of a, th of a small throne, but it has got all the attributes of the Regency period. You've got this wonderful, wonderful shape to it. Look at the way that arm scrolls over and then returns here, goes down onto the stile and those deep sabred legs. The sabred legs on chairs is often associated with Nelson, the death of Nelson, because the sabre was one of the symbols of naval power. And here you have a chair that was made in about 1810. What a fabulous example. All the decoration on here is typical of the Regency period. And there is a set very similar in Shugborough Hall. And I wonder how many there were to this. Was this one of a set of four, six, or even eight in a library or in a huge drawing room around the edge of the room? And when you look at this, it really is just the most comfortable of chairs. I could happily sit on this chair for hours, maybe doing a little research work, very pure, very Regency, and very beautiful. George III was on the throne from 1760 through to about 1820. But because he was declared unfit due to his illness in about 1811, his son, later George IV, became Prince Regent from that period of about 1811 to 1820. The Regency period, however, when we talk about it in terms of art, style, fashion, is generally accepted as being from about 1800 to 1830. That was the period when George III, who was an avid collector, was influencing fashion, taste and collecting in Britain through his collections both at Carlton House and the building of the Royal Pavilion in Brighton. During that period, we see increasing use of rosewood as one of the most fashionable woods, such as on this little chiffonier. As you can see, it has the three shelves above, and the shelves are separated by these brass stringed lyres. The lyre is an important neoclassical symbol. If you think about all the temples that you see in ancient Rome, and figures of gods playing the lyre. But it has this brass gallery going around the top as well. The two doors here opening on the cupboard and as you can see a plane inside. This was made in the middle of the Regency period from about 1815 to 1820. As you can see it's in lovely condition and would make a handsome addition to your home I'm sure. This lovely, lovely pair of library chairs is Regency period, dating from about 1820, executed in mahogany. This was at a time when George III had died and his son, the Prince Regent, was just taking over as George IV. With this very, very beautiful carving just here on the arms and the brass enrichment all the way along the friezes. We still have very much that lyre shape for the front, as you can see with the scrolling arms, the lyre, the neoclassical instrument. And these, 
were almost certainly made by Gillows of Lancaster. Now we know from Susan Stewart's book on Gillows, there is there are several illustrations of room settings dating from the 1820s. And this model of chair is shown in a lot of them. It all helps it to be dated. And of course, we're very lucky to have such a good reference library here at Harvey's so that we can actually look these pieces up, identify them, and in some cases attribute them to particular makers. So almost certainly by Gillows of Lancaster, a wonderful pair of library chairs. And goodness, they really knew how to make comfortable chairs back then rather more so than a lot of the modern seating that we see. I do hope you have enjoyed viewing this video and there will be follow-up videos with discussions and fresh stock items as they become available. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get news of future editions. Click the link below to subscribe to our free regular e-newsletter with further images of fresh acquisitions as well as free invitations to antiques fairs and exhibitions. Thank you.